Welcome to the Encouragement Conquers All podcast with Justin Fatika, the podcast for people who want to learn how to be the most encouraging person on the planet and enhance their encouragement superpowers. Now here's your host, Justin. How's it going, everybody? You know where we're at this week. We're at, we're at a place to encourage you, to build you up, to help you to understand that guess what? This is the most encouraging podcast on the planet, and that's the bottom line. And we need encouragement more than ever. And I can tell you, we've got a guest on that's going to encourage her. I think she's one of the top encouragers in the country, as far as I'm concerned. She's always encouraging people, always building people up. Uh, she's a gift. But I can tell you that you have to ask yourself, how are you being the most encouraging person on the planet? How are you making people better, making people a gift to this world? That's what uh, this next guest we have on us. She's, she actually worked with us for two years. She was a, a missionary volunteer. She sacrificed two years of her life just to learn and grow. And she got so many gifts that she's blowing it out of the water. And her name's Leah Hunt. And she runs a nonprofit called Leah's Kids. And she's the founder and, and director of that nonprofit. And she's doing unbelievable work. And she was a cancer survivor. And she she just she means the world to me. So I just wanted to have her on here because I just thought everyone needs to know all of the encouraging work that she's doing. So give it up for Leah Hunt here. Leah, what's going on? How are you doing? I can't believe we're bonding today. <laughs> I think oh yes. we're gonna blow up the screen with encouragement. I think that's what we're gonna do. good. <laughs> good. That's how the goal, you, isn't it? How are you staying encouraged these days? Oh my goodness! Wow. Well, we have we have a lot of good happening on my end of the world. So you know, no complaints. It's all good things. Yes, so yeah, I'm excited. Tell, tell me, tell me about like how you got into this Leah's kids. I know the story, but maybe those uh, that are you know that that follow me, those that are a big encouragement to our network, maybe they they might not know the great work you do. Yeah, so we as kids, wow. Okay, I love it. <laughs> okay, so we as kids, so really the foundation and beginning the journey of having the Leah's Kids Foundation started from the desire of wanting to do more. And at 17, I knew that I had a bigger calling and that I wanted to step into the next level what God had for me. And so that really came from being a young girl at two and fighting cancer. So I had retinoblastoma, which is a form of eye cancer in my left eye. And so immediately my parents took me to the doctors and he closed the door and said, this is the worst news I have to deliver to you, but your baby girl has a huge tumor wrapped around her left eye. And so immediately the very next day, my family traveled out of state to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And I met with Dr. Carol Shields and we started chemotherapy. And we did about six rounds of chemotherapy and then my cancer went away. But then my parents got that earth shattering news again that their baby girl relapsed. And so about a year later, I started the journey all over again. And we did 26 surgeries, radiation. And then finally, we had a radioactive isotope placed on my left eye. And I was in isolation for an extended period of time in the hospital all alone. And that ended up killing the cancer cells. But slowly, my vision of my left eye faded. And as days went on, my vision went away. And then it completely disappeared. One day I woke up and I just told my mom that it's all dark and I can't see anymore. And yeah. And then I kind of just grew up navigating the life of, you know, having all those side effects from cancer, growing up a little bit different than everybody else. But then that led me to Leah's kids and being able to make that decision at 17. Well, yeah, I know. And, and I just <laughs> love your story for two reasons. One, uh, because I'm all about taking suffering, taking challenges, taking struggles and finding a way to encourage others despite mm -hmm. the struggle you go through. You could have been a victim like many people. Maybe they're like, poor me or look what I've been through, which, yeah, it's tough. Mm -hmm. It's not easy. But what I love your story is because you're making your suffering a victory. You have a victory story. And that's what life's about. How can we be a victor? How can we overcome these things? And so many people right now are going through so much. So that's why I also love your story. Yeah. The other reason why I love me, and I've always told you this, 
I love your story more than ever because when I was young, it was my dream to be able to uh, bring a message of hope to all the world. And you wanted to bring a message of hope to all the world. Mm -hmm. And when you came and worked with us for two years and I was able to walk with you a little bit, it was just one of my favorite things to do to help somebody else, you know, want that you had a dream to, to have Le Leah's kids nationwide and worldwide. And it's becoming that. And yeah. I can tell you that, like, I'm just glad I could be a little bit a part of that. And as I get older, I just mm -hmm. I wanted everybody just to be encouraged by the great work you're doing, because it just touches my heart. And there's a lot of people out there that have dreams or or maybe they're afraid. Mm -hmm. They have something that they believe that they're called to do, that they have a purpose in. And you weren't afraid mm -hmm. to make that dream happen. So tell me, tell me about like, how is that, you know, you, 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 you're 17, you're saying, look, I want to make this dream happen. Tell me about like how it's been now. What are you, 22 now? Are you 22 yet? Or are you 21? 23. 23. 23. Oh, God, <laughs> Five years. You've been at this five years now. Yeah. Tell me how yes. that 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 journey's been from your your perspective. Yeah. So definitely the journey of Leah's kids. It's it's been a whirlwind. So I started Leah's kids, and then six months later I moved to Syracuse, and everybody thought that they're like, "What are you doing? You just started a nonprofit, and now you're moving across <laughs> the country." And, so that was like a very, very touchy subject there for a few months. And but really. <laughs> I remember, I remember. I, hey, I believe it was the smartest decision of your life. But anyway, that's yes. my take. Yeah, no, it definitely was. And now everybody, everybody says that because I can't tell you every single day, if not every other day, I bring up hard as nails, whether I'm in a meeting or I'm talking with someone or I'm speaking somewhere. And they always ask me about my nonprofit experience or where I've learned what to do. And I can't tell you how many days that I said, well, I learned this from Hardy's Nails. And I work, my mom helps me a lot with Leah's kids. And every single day she goes, okay, well, what would Justin do? What did he teach you to do in this situation? And then we would really wow. just back step and go through it. Yeah. And yeah, so thank you for that. And oh, I just, you know, I just love you. You know that. And I just love young people excited that have a purpose. So you get, you get me pumped. We're going to be, this is the most encouraging podcast. And then we're going to just encourage people so much today. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. But yeah. <laughs> No, and so uh, what what has been like, you know, now that you're rocking and rolling here, mm -hmm. I know you got your degree, mm -hmm. right? You got your degree, yes. didn't you? I graduated yeah. college, baby. I, oh, yeah. Hey, you, <laughs> hey, you made a commitment. I told you, you got to graduate college, right? I know. You, I... <laughs> you did it. it you, you fought a little bit. You were fighting it a little bit. Was it worth I it? I did. I'm very glad I stuck it out. I definitely did not want to go, but yeah. it, I mean, school is very hard for me. So I really didn't want to be back in the, those feelings and those trenches, but it definitely was the best thing for me. And I'm very grateful. I'm grateful that, you know, you pushed me, my parents, they really made sure I, I stuck yeah. it out. It was a, it was a family affair, but you know, we, we got, we got through it. It was like when I graduated, my entire family graduated. Like it was a ceremony for everybody. That's the way it works. And so you graduated and now you're full blown, uh, you know, really getting Leah's kids out there. Yeah. And, and I just, I, you know, I see so many of the kids that you're helping and, and, and you know, walking with and giving scholarships to uh, share a little bit about some of your glory stories of the past year, let's say. Tell me one or two stories about some of the kids that you've impacted, because I know you're impacting so many so, yeah so one of our recent kiddos that we helped uh she lived in texas and so she has a form of brain cancer called dipg and so basically when a child is diagnosed with this type of cancer it's a terminal cancer so they have six months to two years being the very max that they can live with this diagnosis um it's wiping kids out left and right uh most of our funerals we attend which we we attend about a handful of months um, they're all mostly from this cancer. And so this family was a very low income home and they lived in this rundown trailer and it was really heartbreaking to see. And so the mom and the dad didn't have water. So they would get buckets and they would walk to their neighbor's house to 
with the buckets of water into their home and the roof was caving in and their front porch collapsed. And it was just a really sad situation. And so we got word of the family. And so we were able to help fix their house up, but then we were also to make the daughter's last dream to come true. And so when she was near the end of her treatment, so at this time she couldn't really breathe on her own. She couldn't really open her eyes that much, uh, walk or talk even. And so we went into her home and we gave her a royal tea party with all the Disney princesses. We had Miss Texas um, come on out and we had so many people. We just were able to fill their home. And so the girl, we brought her out and that was like the first time and it was the last time that she was able to speak. And she sang the Elsa and Anna Disney princess song with Elsa and Anna as they danced with her. And during all of our parties, we give them the financial donation, but then we also have a crowning because within the foundation, we as kids, a a crown is means uh, is a huge symbol for us. And so we crown the kiddos and I kind of give the speech onto like, what the crown means and why we crown them. And we talk about James 1 12, where it says like we bear our cross to receive our crown and eternal glory and that everyone has a cross. And, you know, these kids have a cross, but these kids also have a life mission and they just got their mission a little bit earlier than everybody else. And they're just going to get to go home a little bit sooner than all of us. And the mom, it was really impactful with the mom because she's been so angry with God, knowing that her kiddo was going to pass and she just had months to be with her. And she was so angry and so mad and questioning God. And so when I was able to speak with her about the crown and about what is after earth and what comes after this, um, she really just fell to the floor in tears and just started crying. And she's like, I've been so mad, but I finally have hope. And I finally understand why Adeline has to go to heaven and why God is taking her back. And I realized that she's not my kid, but his. And she, and so that was probably one of the most impactful stories as of recent. Yeah. So Leah, and- Leah, that, that, that's what it's about because, you know, you don't know this, but on the show, I always call atheists or, you know, people from other faiths or people from anywhere. I say, Hey, how are you going to be the most encouraging person on the planet? I'm not here to judge. I'm here to love. And no matter what your belief system is, you got to ask yourself, are you the most encouraging person on the planet? How are you mm-hmm. becoming that person? And what you're saying is, is to become the most encouraging person on the planet to do that. I mean, going through cancer yourself, but also seeing kids going through cancer and their mother watching that, like your family had to watch Mm -hmm. that. And the way to do that is through the word of God, is through faith, is Mm -hmm. through saying, you know what, this isn't easy, but we aren't here for ourselves. We're here for a greater purpose, which is to get to heaven. Mm -hmm. And I bet you, I mean, For me, I've been talking recently uh, about how I love funerals more than I love weddings. I know you're in the wedding age, so I'm getting older, so I'm in the funeral. I'm going to the funeral age of life. But uh, (laughs) but, but like, I I really sincerely mean this. Like when I go to a funeral, like it transforms my life. And I'm sure you can understand that you say go to five funerals a month on average. Mm -hmm. Share how those funerals you know like i like to say funerals are, are are not a time to be discouraged funerals are a time to be encouraged they're, they're to help right. you to be the most encouraging person they're not supposed to help you to to be more discouraging they're not supposed to help you to be more somber and and down on life they're, they're there to pick pick you up share i know you understand that share how these mm-hmm. funerals have picked you up even though they're hard that you probably cry you you know these kids, you probably go through the struggle, but how do they help you, these funerals? Honestly, the a lot of funerals, especially with little tiny humans, Can't imagine. They're, they're very hopeful. They're very sad and they're very hard and everyone's going through the grieving process. But I think one of the most powerful things about a kid's funeral is that you never wear black. We don't wear black. We wear the kid's favorite color. So maybe oh, it's wow, pink, that's maybe awesome. it's purple. Yeah. And so, and we celebrate and parents kind of take out the word funeral and it's more a celebration of life. And something that really sticks out to me in the funerals is that sometimes we don't see how much we're impacting or helping a family. But every time I get to a funeral, what is on the casket or on the urn with the kiddo is the crown that we give them. I've had more families bury their son or their daughter with the crown that Leah's kids gives them. And then along with that, and along with them being able to stand up and be like, yeah, this sucks. It really does. 
but this of is course. what we're going to do. And we're going to choose to see the beauty in it. And then we kind of turn it into a celebration rather than, you know, the worst day ever. Yeah. yeah. And that's what we, we strive to do at Heart as Nails. And what we strive to do with our mission with young people is how do you take these horrible situations, mm -hmm. like these just exhausting, just emotionally, spiritually, mentally, physically, whatever it may be. And how do you take that? And you say, how can I celebrate that? And, and, and share with us one more story. I, I know you've got a hundred of them, but share one more story <laughs> about how you celebrated a kid's life. And, and this kid actually maybe reminded you of when you were a kid and something beautiful happened for you, or it just mm -hmm. like touched you so much that you just want to tell everybody about this kid, because <laughs> just because you're discouraged doesn't mean you can't be an encouragement. Mm -hmm. I'm discouraged all the time. That's life. You know, I feel discouraged. I think I, I can't make it. It's tough. But what encourages me is these people that persevere. And I know you have those stories. So share one more with us. OK, so another family that we recently helped, uh, her name was Cece. She's about six years old and she has a, a form of brain cancer. And so we she's in between scans and in between treatments right now. And she also has a terminal outcome. And so we surprised her family we showed up at her house i called her mom and i say what can we do for you like yes we're going to sponsor you we're going to do all the things that we ought to do but what can we do for you and she said that she just wanted to have an outside party at their home with all the girls so they have three daughters and so we brought the most epic water slide we brought disney princesses oh, wow. again and we brought water balloons water guns food and then she ended up inviting the entire neighborhood so we were able to surprise the entire neighborhood and the girls and have a huge party to just celebrate, you know, <laughs> celebrate going to the next stage of treatment, celebrate how far Cece had come, celebrate her sisters. And we were able to crown her and have all that fun. But we were able to be with the mom and give her a moment of being normal. The mom was able to have her friends over and do what she wanted with her friends. But then the mom, we also found out that, so this family was actually Catholic and not all of our families are religious, but this family in particular was. And so she had a huge devotion to St. Therese. And so I've always had a huge devotion when I was to St. Wow. Therese. When I was a kid, my parents used to come into the hospital room and find like rose petals next to me and covered in my bed. And so we were able to connect on that level and really just give her encouragement and to love on her and to be there with her and just celebrate that family give them a new memory because childhood cancer takes you know takes the the memories away they replaces them with scary things so that's kind of something i love to incorporate into leah's kids is give the family a day to be together to celebrate each other and replace the scary memories with the good memories because at the end of the day the family the family unit is so very important in the fight and when we get to give them a breath of fresh air then it's totally worth it yeah, look, that's the bottom line. We're here today to talk about encouragement. And and, and the bottom line is what, what Leah's saying is a few things. She's saying, number one, she's encouraging everybody. You know, sure, this family has faith, but she's encouraging people that have no faith. You know, we that's what we do in our organization. We encourage kids that have faith. We encourage kids that don't have faith. It's about bringing love and peace and patience and kindness I don't know if you're the most encouraging person on the planet, but guess what? You got to start asking yourself these questions. We got a cancer survivor here who's encouraging kids from all different walks of life and their families. We have to ask ourselves, what are we doing? What are we doing every day to be an encouragement to our own family? And I know I love talking about your dad. How's your dad doing, <laughs> by the way? I, I know I used to always love, hey, is your dad okay with the missionary? I know he's a fan now. You know, in the beginning he wasn't always, but now he is. But how's your dad been doing? How, how has he been, has he changed at all since you came home? <laughs> he's doing yes, he's doing amazing. He's doing awesome. He retired from the navy, so you know oh. he he's doing great. He is he, he still he keeping the boys? Do. Is he still keeping the boys away from you? Yeah, yes, always, always. No matter how old I get, I'll be thirty. I'll be 30 and he'll still be coming into he's, events with me saying that no one talked to me. So, you know, it's just, he's, he's it my, amazing. that's why he's my hero. You, you know, yeah. <laughs> you and your, your dad and I are on the same page with that. Cause my daughter's yeah. beautiful. My daughter's beautiful like you and I'm, I'm protecting her heart as well. You know, 
how about your mother? Your mother's helping you out a lot. How what's she, yeah. how's she how's she involved with Leah's kids? So my mom plays a huge role inside the foundation. She, especially, was, she was helping me a lot while I was in school, just, you know, managing yeah. everything. Uh, honestly, my mom is so powerful at our event. These mothers, like, flock to her, and she's able to just be on that motherly level with them That's that true. I don't have. I have the cancer patient level, but she's yeah. able just to be a mom. And so many times she'll sit these other moms down and be like, hey, you need to go here and talk to here and do here. And yeah, so I'm so blessed to have a mom who helps me with Leah's kids. She helps me with school. So I am, I, she's like my biggest encouragement. So if it wasn't for her, Leah's kids probably wouldn't be where it is today. Yeah, you got your father, he's involved. You got your mother. How about your sisters? Do they help you out? I'm sure your sisters help you out. This is a family affair, I know. <laughs> so I wrote them into all, all sorts of things. Like I saw I your sister as one of the princesses. I, I mean, you like throw them in outfits. <laughs> You're, how okay. do you get away with doing that to your sisters? Okay, so my loophole used to be that they needed service hours. I even oh, got wow. like her friends and I was like, that you need service hours. Now, Lily has definitely maxed out the service hours. She is the service hour queen now. But uh, yeah, so now you got to pay them. <laughs> yeah, I know we're in a new we're in a new territory. But yes, I do make her <laughs> dress up in a costume. I just told her earlier that Saturday she has to be dressed up. So, but what we did is that we created a princess because a lot of times these kiddos that we talk to, they believe it or not, say things like, oh, what did I do wrong? Is God mad at me? Do you think my parents actually hate me, Leah, because I'm sick and look at the stress? And like, these are big, deep thoughts that like seven, eight, nine yeah, year olds are true. having. And so I created the one thing that kids can connect with. And that is princesses. They love Disney. They love Elsa, Anna, Ariel. They love all these princesses. So I took a princess who's walked in their shoes. So I took a, uh, I call it Princess Marigold. And she is the first ever childhood cancer princess. But she fought cancer. She's a princess, but she has a mission to bring joyful smiles to kids that are fighting. And so Princess Marigold now interacts with the kids and says, hey, I had cancer. Like, me too. I was there in the trenches with you. And now she can give them hope and the kids can connect with that and they don't see cancer as something ugly anymore they can see it oh well a princess has it then surely i'm just as important and kind of giving yeah. them that hope but then confidence yeah and you got a princess my son you know you sent it to me i'm so thankful you got a you got a princess marigold book i mean yes i mean do. you know me i'm you know a strapping young man here i i well, old man but i i am not i'm not going for princesses so, but you know, don't I, worry we have she has her pet pig she has a knight and, <laughs> of, course and she has, a of course the guy's yeah. gotta be a pet pig. You're making the guy but, into the pet pig. <laughs> but we have a whole series. We just we there's a whole book series. So you just have to stay and wait for the next book that involves a guy. The first one had I to be about wait. marigold. You I I'll send wait. it to you, don't worry. <laughs> I know I look, I love when you send me things. You so send me your whole plan and, and know, you know, your, whole, your whole goals. And I know one day, I love talking about this. I know it might not be tomorrow, but just like the gyms that we're going to build, just like the arenas we're going to build. You have a dream to build a hospital one day, right? Don't you? Yes, of course. <laughs> of course. No, but I what, what I loved like when we hung out is that you weren't afraid to bring up these dreams. You know, a lot of people are afraid to bring up their dreams because they're going to ah, might be let down or they don't happen, you know, but but no, I I'm actually we have one of our uh, centers. I don't know if you know, but we just moved another center to Columbus. So we got one in Syracuse. Now we're in Columbus, mm -hmm. Ohio. And this center here, there's a guy who had a dream to train young people to to help kids in the faith. It, it was his dream that, you know, many people would come pray you know, in our center. And he didn't make it happen when he's alive. He actually passed away. And I always have to think about that when I'm a dreamer. So just because you're a dreamer and you're 80 or 70 or 50 or you're 30 or 20, you know, look, your dreams might be a gift to somebody else's dreams. And his dream was a gift to us. And it still keeps on giving. So I love that you dream. We, look, to be the most encouraging person on the planet, you got to be a dreamer. You got to be a Definitely. dreamer. And, and I think dreams I are how God... Go ahead. No, no, you go for it. Dreams are, dreams <laughs> I, are how God. Tell me, tell me, tell me. I, I think, 
I think dreams are how God really speaks to you. Cause I know for me, every time that I'm praying or I'm saying Silas, that's where the dreams come and they evolve and they grow bigger and bigger. But then I kind of take a step back and it's like, wow, God, you want me to do that. And that's really what happens with, you know, teaming up with the hospitals and the school systems and now going into the hospitals to teach. And that's what happened with the battle plan journals. And that's where the vision of Marigold came and always through times of prayer. And that's where I think that God can really move by your dreams. And then you get to carry that mission out for him. Yeah. Yeah. So tell me what, what's your day, day to day? Like, how, how are you, how are you living here? What are you doing every day? <laughs> what am I doing with my life? Okay. Well, what kind of stuff? <laughs> I wanna, look, when I was your age, I was like all over the place, but I had to build like a structure in my life. Have you figured that out? Did we help you with that or no? <laughs> yeah. So I definitely have a structure, but that doesn't mean my structure isn't a little bit chaotic because of how hey, I work. I, it I get it. I'm with you. We're a team, <laughs> We're a team in that uh, way. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Okay. So my, see, my structure will really vary day to day and if I'm going to school or not. So, yeah. but for the most part, when I don't have classes and all that fun stuff, it really begins with waking up. I usually pray, I go on a run, do daily mass, or I go to a morning meeting because everyone likes to have morning meetings. And um, and then really it's just meeting with people throughout the day and working on Leah's kids, brainstorming. I do a lot of a lot of planning, a lot of event planning. Um, but then a lot of being on the phones with moms, which has been really impactful and really just calling them and saying like, what do you need today? And then that can end up in like us showing up at someone's house with dinner. Or, you know, us, you know, planning a whole new event for a kid again, because they are just really discouraged. So it varies depending on the amount of kids that we're working with. But for me as a person, it always pretty much begins the day. I usually like to run and I usually go to church. That's great. And how do you keep going? Like, you know, I know me, like with all the people that we're helping, all the people we're caring for, hugging, crying with, laughing with, encouraging, whether it's our team or whether it's the people on the road. A lot of things, it's not easy to do this. So what keep, what do you think keeps your spirit going? You know, you've got a prayer life, which is great. That helps you stay encouraged. Is there anything else, your family, of course, anything outside of that that keeps you going? Well, I think in the cancer world and the nonprofit world, it's, you know, you have your moments where you're really sad. I mean, like we get another kiddo and the mom says like, we're out on the streets and we have a family right now who just lost their house. And so we're trying to find them a house. And so those moments are so sad, but in that sadness, I'm so excited because it's like, wow, that is another family we get to serve. And I think if we really look at it as a way of being able to help them, like, yeah, that, that sucks. This is horrible. But now we get to step in and do what God has called us to do with these families. And so that really always encourages me being able to, okay, yeah, let us help you. What can I do for you? How can I be yeah. there for you? And I think you hit it on the head. Any, any psychologist, any psychiatrist, and any faith person, if they really study and understand the human person, the way that people are going to be able to get out of their challenges is being a person of service not being a Debbie Downer and thinking me, me, me. And that's why the social media culture, you know, has been such a, a detriment for so many kids, so many people, so many adults. And, you know, and I know you're a young person. So you, does, does social media affect you at all? You know, things you see or, or always having to be on there or always having to post something or, you know, how does that affect you? Yeah, so definitely it's hard because we do have to be on there heavily. You know, our social media platforms are our biggest resources and outputs for Leah's kids. Um, we get a lot of our families through that. So it is a lot, but I have a few girls who help me run it. So, you know, when it gets too heavy for one person, we just kind of rotate it. But then also it's kind of like, well, what she's doing or what he's doing with his life, like that's awesome, but that's not my calling. That's not my life mission. And so that's what really helps me when I see, you know, other people having so many exciting things happen. Like that's great for them. And I'm excited for them because that's what God has called them to do. And they're living their mission out, but that doesn't mean that's Leah's mission. And so that kind of always what brings me back is, okay, what am I doing for what God has given me? Yeah. And I think that's very important that we got to know what our gifts are, what our skills are. We got to know you're the energy, you know, you're the, you're the, you're the, the, you're the big, you know, face and encouragement of Leah's kids, but you need other people to help you. And, and I'm sure yeah. you have lots of volunteers 
You've got lots of staff to help. And, and that's something hopefully you learn from me. Like, I believe that, you know, Jesus built a team. You know what I mean? He mm-hmm. built the team. You know, so if he needed a team, I need a team. And okay. who, who are some people that I might not know of that you could tell me about that are on your team that, like, pick you up when you're down? Okay, so I have a small group of, of a team that helps me work. So really, it's me, and then my mom helps me, and then I have two other girls who serve with inside Leah's kids. Uh, their names are Savannah and Liana. They're just a few years older than me, and they really – um, God always sends me people. Every time I need something, he always sends me the person to help me. And so one day Liana appeared and she said, um, I want to work for you and I want to be involved and I'm leaving the classroom and I want to run on social media and I want to help with this, this, and this. And That's that was cool. a huge encouragement to me because they all have skill sets that I lack in or are my strong suit. And so they're good at, you know, the spreadsheets and all those things that I can go out and talk to people and do what I do. And then I have someone in the back end able to, you know, collect all the things. And then I have another girl, Savannah, who uh, Savannah came at a time when I just moved to Texas and um, we met at a city meeting and she was like, okay, wow, I want to help you. I want to be a part of this. And then it really has turned into friendships with both of the girls that they're like, we love Leah's kids, but we also love Leah. And so that's been really cool to experience. Yeah, and I, I think the, the, the power of being an encouragement has to do with knowing that you can't do it alone. We need community. And people need community nowadays more mm-hmm. than ever. You need to have people surrounding these young ladies surrounding you and mm-hmm. supporting you and, and walking with you. No young men that are supporting you. There's no young no. men. In you. All, right, no. all right, well, good. Dad <laughs> no, doesn't have to dad. get you. No, right. no. We got to get him. <laughs> daughter for my dad and I tell him that all the time I say you don't have to worry about any of that right now with me so you know and also I, we, I, we gave you some great formation on how to you know really deal with those young men you know yes oh them. oh yes don't you worry you did <laughs> <laughs> I helped your dad out there no but but my daughter just loves you and my kids just love you and whenever your name comes up we always get excited you know whenever your name comes up I just get so encouraged and I don't know if you heard about it. We have a, a some of the other couples coming on for some podcasts, but we we have this summer we got three. I know all the weddings. I mean, I got you like know. ten weddings. I have ten weddings. I can only do go to seven of them. I have ten weddings this summer. I mean, seriously, that's a lot. I know I wasn't able to get to them, but they everyone they're all getting married. All your missionaries are, are getting together there, Justin. Well, I don't know. But I, the but I love it. I love it. And this is a way to be an encouragement. If you're dating anybody out there or before you date, Leah, just to remind you, like just a little dating commercial break here. All right. Here we go. I'm ready. I'm ready. I expect nothing less. <laughs> I'm always giving you dating advice. No, but it's very important. Like, the reason I love these weddings that have happened already and one of them that's going to happen again of missionaries, these volunteers that came together and then they waited a couple of years and now they dated. They were friends first. And I think it's so important, like anybody out there, if you're dating somebody, I always used to tell Leah that, you know, look, you got to build that friendship because you know what? Romance is going to get old at times or maybe a little stale, but your friendship will never get old. You always need your friend. You don't always need romance. You know, you always need a friend to walk with you. And I just tell people, if, you know, people are like, oh, I want the cutest girl ever. Well, you know, not, not everybody can be like me and have the cutest girl in the world. But you know, <laughs> Mary Fatiga, Mary Fatiga. Yeah, Mary you know? Fatiga, how's Mary? Shout out to Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Mary's great. We're, we're getting ready. We're getting ready. We're, we're going on a vacation soon. And we're going to have some fun there with the family and bonding. We're going to be bonded together. Uh, but it's important to spend quality time with people. And that's what you're doing. Look, right now in our country, we live in a fatherless nation. You might not know this, but the millennials, they're carrying a big load right now. Over 50% of millennials don't have a father, like, in their life. You know, like, that. that's unheard of. I mean, I'm not talking about divorce. We're just talking about that they're not in the kids' lives. And so right now we have to ask ourselves, like, what's important? And what you're doing is you're giving presence and time. 
You know, it's great you're giving the presents. You know what I mean? You do that. <laughs> that's fun too. That's a lot of fun. Presents. <laughs> presents are fun. Yes, yes, yes. Lots of shopping. That's a good part. Lots of shopping. You love shopping. Nothing wrong with I that. Do. But what you give more than anything, and I think people have, and I think you can share about this. You know, for people, especially who are mothers, who are fathers, who who are grandfathers, grandmothers, who are friends, who are sisters, brothers, how important presence, you know, is presence time with people, spending time with people. How have you noticed how important that is for, for people and how all of us, whether it's kids with cancer or not, how we need to spend time with others and be sincere about that? Yeah, definitely. So I think really, I know from my personal journey of really just sitting down with the kids, and you kind of, you meet them where they're at and you break down that barrier and you have fun with them. But very quickly, like those kids realize that, you know, you're there for more than just playing with them. And so many times they grab my hand and they go, Leah, when I, right now I have cancer and I'm, I'm really sick and I don't know what to do. And I grab their hand back and it's just kind of like, you know, hey, me too. Like I had it too when I was your age and, and it's okay and we're going to get through it. And I can definitely see, the impact that that makes. And that goes farther than the experience than the dream party we give them, than the donation that we give the family, because that in itself is a source of hope that they probably aren't going to find many other places. But if we can give that to them, I know for me, I didn't meet someone else who went through cancer until I was on the road with hard as nails. It wasn't even in my hospital. It was at an event yeah. and a girl walked up to me and she said, I have cancer right now. And nobody in my I school knows. That. And yeah, that, I was that like, made a huge impact on you. Yeah. And so that was like the first time. And so I was like, I want every other kid to have that feeling of knowing somebody else and seeing them on the other side and being able to see, okay, we're in the trenches, but there's more, there's beauty in this and, and we can find it. Well, I can't tell you how important it is like that people need to be present mm -hmm. to their kids. Mm -hmm. They need to be present to their wives, their their husbands, they need to be present to their friends. Presence is important. And, and I love what you shared. C.S. Lewis says, friendship is born when you say you too, you too. Hey, we've been through this together. We've been through this together. We walk with one another. And that's what you're doing for these, these young kids. You know, and, and people spending time with you is important. So know that anytime, you know me, anytime you want a flight, it's on me. You ever want to come and come to Columbus? It's actually an easy flight now, right? <laughs> yeah. It's an easy fight because it's just a you know you can go right from you know Dallas Fort Worth right 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 to uh, Columbus so you're always welcome yep. or even to Syracuse you're always welcome because presence is important and spending time with people is important that's what I've learned uh, you know about our I don't know if you've heard about our basketball teams but like mm -hmm. we're we're really growing our you know these kids lives are being transformed and it really has nothing to do with basketball basketball is the vehicle. You know, and even cancer, cancer is the vehicle that's led you to to these kids to give them the presence they deserve so beautifully. But presence is a mission we all should have. If you're talking about being the more, most encouraging person on the planet, you got to spend time with people. I mean, seriously. Yeah. <laughs> no, you do. And, and you got to be deliberate about it. You know, I what people don't realize what changed my life is somebody writing a letter to me. That's what changed my life. Writing letters, you know, I'm sure you do that. Every person you're writing a letter to, I'm sure every donor you're writing a letter to, I'm sure every, you're always writing letters. But always letters, writing. Always writing. You love that writing. You love that writing, right? It's my Woo favorite. It's my favorite. Your favorite, thing, <laughs> your favorite thing ever. No, but just like as, as, as we really uh, spend time here today, what are some practical ways that people can, can be present you know, they might not be somebody like me who's traveling the country giving talks to tens of thousands of people each year. They might not be somebody like you who's impacting hundreds of, of people who have cancer and, and sitting with them and walking with them, giving them parties. But what's a way that people can be present to their family or to a friend or even to an enemy that they could be present to somebody? What do you think could speak to somebody, a practical way for them to encourage somebody with their presence? So a very practical way for me that what I have done 
is really looking at the person in front of you or looking at this next event or where you're going or what you have to do and saying, okay, well, like in that, in that crowd is Christ in that crowd is going to be a mini Christ and how I treat that person is how I would treat Christ. And being able to look at them in the, in the lens of, okay, this is my brother and sister in Christ. And this person is just as important as if I was going to go meet, you know, a world famous actor or athlete, but looking at this person as Christ walking. And cause you know, Christ says in the Bible to serve those that are sick and to serve those that are naked and homeless. And that is as if we're taking care of Jesus himself. And so when, when I walk into a room, it's like, okay, okay. God is in this room and I may not even know it. I may leave the room. I may leave the grocery store and have absolutely no idea. But if I was kind and loving and able to be an encouragement to everyone I see, then we don't know how far that can go. That's beautiful. And and a question I just have is like, how many survivors have you had in the past since you've been back in in Texas? Mm -hmm. How many survivors that you still keep in touch with are still, still fighting the good fight here? the past two or three years? Yeah. So we talk to all of our families still, even if they've passed away, I still, you know, have phone calls randomly with mom and dads or the kiddo themselves. Uh, So we still talk to everybody. And that's the cool thing about Leah's kids. is isn't just like a one and done. It's a, okay. Like welcome to the family. We walk with you forever and ever. And like, we just celebrated a milestone and one of our kiddo siblings who graduated high school. And so we were able to go celebrate that with her. And then another one of our kiddos, you know, they, she got the president of the FCA at her her school. And so we were able to go celebrate with her. And so it's cool because we kind of enter the entire family. We take a lot of focus on everybody and we get to celebrate them and all their milestones all the way through. Like I still talk to like the second and third families I ever crowned when I was in high school and 2018. (laughs) So yeah, yeah. That's beautiful. And uh, what I what I one day I'd love to uh, bring the bus down, bring our big tour bus, take five or ten of the families on tour, and they're going to share their story about how you know God's helped them through this. What do you think about that? You think that'd be fun? That would be life changing. That would yeah. that would be pretty awesome. We would we would do some good there. <laughs> well, no, plan on it because whenever you're ready, I'll do it. And I'll do it just to help you. You know, I really would love to do that and. I just love you so much as, as we continue to grow and you continue to grow in, in, in your mission. It's so important to help one another. And one of my greatest honors, you know, it's like this year in Columbus, I won't be there, but my greatest honor is watching all of them just succeed. And one of my greatest honors of my life as I get older and, you know, hopefully I'm still effective as I get older, but as I get older and and I, you know, she's rolling her eyes at me. The, all these young ladies, that's what, that's what the young ladies do with that work with me. They just roll their eyes at me, mess with me. All right. <laughs> You've been saying that since the day I met you. <laughs> What's that? What's that? What am no, I no, saying? No, we all roll that. We all roll our eyes at you. Well, you do. <laughs> Let's not lie here. You, 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 I deserve it. I get it. I went to an all boys school. I just talked about that recently. But. I can tell you the one thing I get so excited about, I told you this when you left and I had tears in my eyes when I told you that, I love that you're doing so well. It makes me like, I don't need to talk to you, but once a year, you know, for me personally, I just love watching people do great things. And you are doing such a great job. Why I wanted you on here is basically, so in my everyday life, Angela's got my whole schedule. She's every little thing in order. I mean, I, I don't even have time to go to the bathroom. I go to the bathroom, like, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? You know, everything's so structured now. But I want to tell you, I wanted to tell you how much it means what you're doing. And you've taken all you learned when you worked with me and you're doing greater things than I ever could. Because the Bible says in John 14, 12, it says, Jesus said, amen, amen, I say to you, you will do the works that I do and even greater ones than these. What Jesus was saying is, he was great, but he come to make us greater, not because we were God, not because we were better than Jesus, but because Jesus was a real gift of service. And you, you are becoming greater than I could ever become. And when I'm on my last breath on this earth, which 
hopefully it'll be many years from now, but it could be tomorrow, is that the bottom line, I'll, I hope to see in heaven, which I will, Lord, you know, Lord willing me, for sure you. <laughs> and and for, for you personally, I just want you never, when you're discouraged, I want you to hear in your ear that, that I am so proud of you and I'm so excited for what you're doing. And I just tell everybody about what you're doing and I'm always talking about you. It's the truth. I'm always telling people about I was just at the wedding. Hey, you see what Leah's doing? You see what Leah's doing? You see what Leah's doing? You might not hear it from me, you know, you know, in a text or a call, but know that you're with me in spirit. And I do the same thing with every young person that spent time with me. Did you see what Izzy's doing? Did you see what, you know, uh, what Angela's doing? See what Joe's doing, you know? And because it, it's such a gift that I got to spend two years with you. So thank you for spending time with me. And I miss you, and I and I love you, and you're one of the one of the you're probably one of the few people, honestly, that I can say is the most like me out of any over a hundred now missionaries and missionary volunteers. Over a hundred, you're probably the most like me, and I I don't know if that's a compliment, but I, I did, I'll take it as a compliment. <laughs> All right. Well, I didn't want to speak for you. you, know, you know, I didn't want to... uh, no, no, no. I think you have to call me. It's okay. I think you have to call me. What are you going to tell everybody on this podcast that isn't? Are you serious? You can. All right. Keep, keep lying. Great job. All right. No, but honestly, you have such a gift of, of like, like perseverance. And I call it a bulldog tenacity. You have this tenacity. Keep it up and keep it up because those kids are counting on you. And every one of those little kids are God's kids. They're God's kids. And they're counting on you to keep going. If anybody's listening right now, there's something in your life you need to keep persevering. Leah is a witness of perseverance. I just want you to talk to anybody who's listening right now and just tell them, you know, how can they persevere in a tough time they're going through? What's going to help them? I think perseverance goes hand in hand with finding your own normal. So maybe your life schedule has just been uprooted as like with a cancer diagnosis, but that stems from, okay, we see it, we feel it. We are not a fan of it, but we find our own normal, you know, navigating life with a new cross that we're carrying and navigating life with a new, new struggle is finding your normal with it and finding the beauty within it. But it all comes down to a choice. And I think the power of our choices are the most powerful thing that we have. And the power of your choice really directs you're going to go left or you're going to go right. Are you going to go up or down? And finding that normal, making the decision to walk the path and choosing to see the hope in it, choosing to see the beauty. That is what perseverance is made of, in my opinion. Well, that's that's Leah. <laughs> Leah, huh? You better listen to her. If you don't listen to her, she's going to roll her eyes at you. But I'm I, will. <laughs> I will. I will. I, I, I told you. I told you. I told you. She's, listen to what she's saying. Persevere. And put a structure together. Don't get down on yourself. There's a lot of people that they go through a challenge and they turn to addiction. They go to a challenge and they turn to self-hatred. There's a lot of people that go through a challenge and turn to a lack of hope. But today, you can be that person that turns to persevering and serving others. That's what Leah's saying. Be a person that doesn't say, woe is me. I'm a victim. Be a victor. Be victorious. Get out there. Make a difference. Impact people's lives. And when you're down and out, she's telling you there are cancer survivors out there and there are kids with cancer counting on you. So pray for the kids at Leah's kids. And how can people get involved with what you got going on? Share with us. How can they get involved? What's something, something somebody could do? <laughs> okay, well, if someone can do really... Honestly, pray for these kiddos, pray for these families, because within a day's notice, they have a completely new, different lifestyle. And maybe that's from going from one chemo drug to a different chemo drug, from going to brain surgery to getting a spinal tap. It changes rapidly. And you can follow along all of our kiddos' stories on our website, leahskids.org, and all the social media. Make sure to get there, leahskids.org. Get there. Just get there. You can see all their cute little faces, and you can read all about them, and you see all the videos of their dream parties and walking with them. You know, we need people to help be a part of giving crowns to these kids and giving relief to mom and dad. Because, like, would you want to have to choose? That's what I said. You, would you have to want to choose between sitting in the hospital bed with your kiddo or 
going to work so you can pay the bills. Do you not like every parent wants to be at the hospital side with their kids. And so that's where we come in. So we can make sure they stay there and we'll cover the bills. So if you want to be a part of bringing families together in the hospital, then come learn about Leah's kids, help them out. Got to do it. (laughs) It's not going to kill you, right? It's not going to kill you, but these kids are going through this challenge and they need your help. So make sure to help them get to Leah's kids and be a support And you're supporting a young person that was a big part of my life. And I'm thankful for her and her whole family. And and we got to keep going. That's the bottom line. One day at a time, we got to support each other, be a gift. But Leah's kids, they're doing a great job. Now it's our job to get out there and do something good. I want to tell you, guess what? We learned how to be more encouraging today, didn't we? We learned how to be more encouraging. Go out there and be the most encouraging person on the planet. That's what I'm asking you to do. And if you don't know what that means, it means doing your very best. And you do, we do fail at it. We do struggle at it. But let's do our very best, our very best to be an encouragement. Does somebody dis- disagree with you? Good. Encourage them all the more. Does somebody agree with you? Challenge them to be better. May you be strong and know that myself and Leah are counting on you. All right? Carrying no. you on. <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Awesome job, Leah. I'm so proud. Of you. Great job. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. Great job. Very, very nice of you to have me on. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Oh, anytime, anytime. <laughs> we love having you on. We love having you on. Justin just closing the set. Thanks for listening to the Encouragement Conquers All podcast with Justin Fatika. Make sure to subscribe and follow to be notified when the newest episodes of the podcast go live. You can find contact information and important links in the show notes. Stay tuned for the next episode.